everyone, and welcome to the MAP 211 review of Gauss Jordan Row Reduction. My name is Julia, and I work for the uh, tutoring centers at ASU. So, Gauss Jordan Row Reduction is a method for solving systems of linear equations like these in which we try to isolate um, the, each of the variables by performing what's called uh, row operations. So we'll get into what row operations are in a minute, but the first thing we wanna do is we want to set up our system of equations as an augmented matrix. Now what an augmented matrix is, is say we have, it looks kinda like this, and on this side, we have coefficients for our x's and our y's. And on this side, we're going to have our answers. So we're just going to look at the numbers and we're going to remove the variables from these equations. So, importantly, it's important to put these in to our matrix in the same order. So it's always good to start by making sure that your equation system is lined up so the x's are above the x's and the y's are above the y's and that all the just plain numbers are on the right side. So our system is already written in that way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by creating a column of coefficients for our x variables. So we see we have a three here for the first one. We're gonna put a three in here and we have a two in the second one. And so for each row, each row is going to consist of one of our equations. So we'll put a two down here. So it's also really important to make sure that your coefficients so go in the same rows. So for instance, this first row, we want to make sure that our coefficients are three and one. So we're going to have a one here for our y. And we want to make sure that our two and our five in this one are on the same row as well. So we're going to have a five here. And that's important. You never want to like flip flop these because then you won't be representing the same equations. So importantly, each row has to represent a particular equation in your system. So lastly, we want to put the just answers, the solution side, these are plain numbers over here, on this side, so this side of this bar thing here. And so again, with our first row here, we're gonna have a zero associated with that, and our second row is going to have a seven associated with it. So now that we have this written as, in, as an augmented matrix, Let's talk about row operations. There are three different types of row operations that we can use that preserve the linear relationship between these two equations. One is that we can swap rows. So say we have row one here, let's call this guy row one. And we have call this guy row two, just for simplicity. So we can swap the order of row one and row two. Oops, that's a two. And what that means is just taking this row and writing it in this position. And similarly, taking the top row and writing it in this position. Our next row operation is going to be uh, scalar multiplication of a row. So that's where we just take a, a real valued number, um, say, let's say three, for instance, and we multiply a whole row by that three. So that would be the same as taking our, say, our top equation here and multiplying the whole thing, both sides, by a three. Okay? So what that looks like, we usually use a notation for that is, so say we're talking about R1 again, row one. We would say row one, we're gonna now replace row one as it is with, with three times row one. And then we just take each one of these numbers and we multiply it by a three. The last type of row operation 
is where we add a multiple of one row to another row. So say we want to add maybe three times our second row to our first row. We would say row one is now row one plus three times row two. So again, we have swapping, multiplying, by a real number and we have adding a multiple of one row to another. Any other sort of operation that you would do to these rows is not going to preserve the relationship between these two equations. It may damage the equation so that they no longer represent the same equation, same line as each of these individually. So you don't wanna do any other types of operations to these rows. So let's erase that and let's work through our example here. So in order to use Gauss-Jordan elimination, our goal is to perform row operations on this augmented matrix here so that it looks like one, zero, zero, and one on the left-hand side and some new numbers, we'll just call them A and B for now, on the right-hand side. So what this means is that for our X, since we have this one represents X's, the coefficients of X's, and this one represents the coefficients of Y's, we would have one times X plus zero times Y equals A. And that means that one equals A, or excuse me, X equals A. And similarly, we would have Y equals B. So that's our goal, and that's what we want to use row operations to do. So, Let's start by looking at what we have. And actually, let me erase this too. Boop, 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 boop. So we, we know we want a one here in this first spot. And that's gonna represent our X. So let's go ahead. We notice that if we subtract the second row from the first row, we'll get a one here. So let's look at that. We'll say that we're gonna have row one is going to become row one minus row two. And this gives us, well, three minus two is one. One minus five is negative four. And so that's this guy minus this guy. And then zero minus seven is negative seven. And now, since we only perform that on the first row, the second row will stay exactly the same. So two, five, and seven. Next, we wanna have a zero where this two is. Because remember, we wanna have something that looks like one, zero, zero, and one on our left-hand side. So since we want a zero there, let's try adding, or subtracting rather, from row two, We'll say row two minus two, row one. Okay? So again, we have the same things on the top row, one, negative four, and negative seven, because we haven't done anything to the top row. But now, and so notice that we say times, uh, times negative two are one, right? But we're not actually gonna change row one. Um, you could change it and then change it back, but that's a lot of extra work. We're just going to remember that we're going to multiply the values of row one by two and then subtract that from our, our, our row two. So in this case, we have two minus two times one, so minus two, and that gives us the zero that we'd like. Now we have five 
minus two times negative four. Well, this actually equals five plus eight, which is 13. So we're gonna have a 13 here. And similarly, let me get rid of that, make some room. Actually, let's get rid of that too. Similarly, we're gonna have seven minus two times negative seven for this position. So seven minus two times our negative seven here. And that equals seven plus 14, which equals 21. So we've got a 21 here. So we've now got a one in this position, a zero in this position. We still need to get a one here and a zero here. So it's usually easiest to start by putting your ones in, kind of working under, if you think of this as like a diagonal, wor working to get your ones in and the zeros below them first. And the reason for this is it just ends up making simplifying a little easier. So next, we'll come up back over to the left over here. We know that we have this 13 here and we'd like this to be one. So let's take row two and we're going to divide it by 13 because 13 divided by 13 is one. So that'll be row two. So we've got one, negative four, negative seven on the top. We've got zero and then 13 divided by 13 is one and 21 divided by 13 is just 21 divided by 13 because that 13 doesn't divide into 21. So we'll just leave that as is. Lastly, we want to look at getting rid of this negative four. Well, if we add a negative, or if we add a positive four to negative four, that'll give us zero. So what we wanna do, since we have a one down here, is we want to say row one is going to be row one plus four row two. And that gives us one, and then we'll have negative four times four, or pl negative four plus four times one, which is zero as required. And then we can just put those in here. And then we have negative seven plus four times 21 over 13. This one's a little more complicated, so I'm gonna write it below. So we need to get a 13 on the bottom of this guy. So we're gonna multiply our bottom here, and, or our bottom and our top, excuse me, by 13. That gives us negative 91, so seven, negative seven times 13 is negative 91, over 13 for that one. And then we'll just distribute this four over to our 21 here. So that gives us plus 84 over 13. And then if we simplify this, that's negative seven over 13. So we have negative seven over 13 here, and then our 21 over 13 comes along for the right over here. So we just got one, 21 over 13. Boom. All right, let me erase a little bit here, make myself some space. So now we have this in the form that we want. We have our augmented matrix, we have a diagonal of ones, and then zeros everywhere else, which is exactly what we're looking for. So what we wanna see is how do we interpret this? Well, remember, this row represented our x's and this row represented our y's for their coefficients. So what this says, if we rewrite this, I'm gonna rewrite it over here, as a system of equations again, what this is saying is one times x plus zero times y equals negative seven over 13, right? And similarly, the bottom says zero times x 
plus 1 times y equals 21 over 13. So we can simplify this further, get rid of what we don't need here, these zeros. This amounts to 7 equals negative 7 over 13 and, or excuse me, y, x equals negative 7 over 13 and y equals 21 over 13. And that's our answer. So we know that these two systems intersect when x is negative 7 over 13 and y is 21 over 13. So that is our answer. Great, so now that we've solved that, let me clear my screen here and advance to the next page. Before I go, I just want to remind you all that if you are looking for any additional academic support or tutoring, you can go to our website, tutoring.asu.edu, to access all of our different tutoring services. Also, if you're looking for help with a specific course, you can use our tutor search tool, which you can find on our main page or by going to this full link here. And that'll allow you to search for our tutoring services for a specific course. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.